While we await the replies from the respondents to the final addresses of the PDP and the Labour Party, we have compiled the potential consequences of not disqualifying Tanubu. However, before delving into that, let's take a look at the timeline of the remaining court proceedings since many are eager to know when the judgment will be delivered. The respondents are expected to finalize their replies on Friday, the 28th of July, 2023. After that, all parties will reconvene for the adoption of addresses, which will be followed by the court's serious deliberations and writing of judgments. It is during this period that the public will be informed of the day the judgment will be delivered, a day that may bring about a significant change in Nigeria's judicial landscape, where justice will either prevail or be denied. One crucial aspect to note is that nobody knows the exact judgment day, as it rests in the hands of the honorable judges. They will base their decision on the merits of the case, not on technicalities. The final addresses of the respondents indicate their hope for the matter to be dismissed or treated based on technicalities, but the judges are aware of their responsibility to thoroughly evaluate the evidence presented before them. One of the grounds for disqualifying Tinubu is certificate forgery, a reason that has led to the disqualification of other candidates in past election disputes. Failing to disqualify Tinubu on this ground may set a precedent where others could easily forge certificates with impunity and still contest elections without repercussions. This could potentially undermine the integrity of the electoral process. Another disqualification ground involves the invalid candidacy of Tinubu himself, not Shetima. This is related to the failure to replace the vice presidential candidate within the prescribed 14-day period as required by law. If Tinubu is not disqualified based on this, it might encourage future candidates to ignore time limits and other legal requirements, leading to disorderliness and impunity in the electoral process. Dual nationality is another crucial issue, where Tinubu's possession of a foreign passport and potential allegiance to another country has raised concerns. If he is not disqualified on this ground, it may set a precedent where candidates with dual nationality could potentially ascend to power, possibly leading to conflicting interests and decisions that might not be in the best interest of Nigeria. Perhaps the most concerning ground for disqualification is Tanubu's alleged involvement in narcotics, where $460,000 was reportedly seized from his account by the U.S. government. If Tanubu is not disqualified on this basis, it might pave the way for individuals with criminal pasts, including those involved in narcotics and other illegal activities, to aspire to and even become the president of Nigeria. Such a situation could have severe consequences and send the wrong message to the Nigerian youth. Furthermore, there is an issue of double nomination of Shetima, which may or may not have been adequately addressed by the Supreme Court. Failure to address this properly could have similar consequences to the invalid nomination issue, affecting policy and setting a precedent for future elections. Lastly, Tinubu's failure to meet the constitutional requirement of scoring 25% of the total votes in the FCT raises concerns. If any technicality or maneuvering allows him to bypass this requirement, it could lead to doubts about the judiciary's independence and the potential surrender of its power to the executive branch. This could have serious implications for the country's governance and democratic process. In conclusion, the decision of whether or not to disqualify Tinubu has significant implications for the future of Nigeria's judiciary, electoral process, and governance. It will set precedents that will shape the nation's political landscape, so the judges must carefully consider all aspects before arriving at their judgment.